All right, guys, welcome to the Brecon Beacons in South Wales. This is my local playground for astrophotography. But tonight I'm going to be photographing something I've never photographed before, and that is the SpaceX Starlink satellites. So I'm going to try and get some shots, and then I'll let you guys know what I think about the whole situation. Whoa! That was a really nice meteor. Sorry, <laughs> that was a that was a Gemini meteor. Anyway, I'm going to try and get some photographs of the satellites. And then I'll let you guys know what I think about the whole situation. So I'm using the app Heavens Above, which is a really good app to tell you about any satellite appearances in the night sky. It's telling me that at between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. the train of SpaceX Starlink satellites should be passing over my location. It's about a week or two since they launched, so they're not quite as bunched together anymore. And they've probably gone into higher orbits now, so they're not shining as bright as they would have been in the first few days, but either way, be interested to see them because I haven't seen them yet and uh, I just want to see how it makes me feel because as you know it's a very controversial situation right now uh, which I'll talk more about later but I've got a 55 mil I'm gonna try and get some shots on the 55 mil hopefully that allows me to see them uh, sort of separated in the long exposure I've also got 135 mil on standby to perhaps get some sort of more close-up images and yeah just gonna see what happens a couple of them actually went overhead a few minutes ago and I was hoping to get a shot in the east as they sort of set in the east I've got a really nice composition with Sugarloaf Mountain in the Brecon Beacons but they were really bright when they were overhead uh, but they faded before they got anywhere near the horizon so I'm not sure if the shot is gonna work and I'm not actually sure I care or not if the shot is gonna work Alright, so there's one going overhead right now. It's on its own. I'm just going to try and get it with the 135. Okay, I've got him on the 135. You can see how fast it's going. But it's on its own. I was kind of hoping to see like a train. You know, a big trail of them. There's still a few more to come. Keeping an eye on the live map. There's another one. Oh, here we go. Now we got a bit of a trail going on. Whoa, it's three in a row. Whoa, that's weird. I'll try and get this on the 50 as well. Whoa, this. Whoa, 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 this five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, this is so weird. I'm gonna try and get my camera at an angle to get more of them in the frame. Whoa, it's just a big train of them in the sky. Just marching across to the horizon. My God, that's weird. I cannot imagine thousands of those in the sky at the same time so I'm just watching the I think it's the last one maybe there's some stray ones I don't know but uh, it just they just didn't stop coming it was it was crazy it just I couldn't believe how long that went on for and Man, the thought of thousands of those being in the sky has now become even more terrifying than it already was. Oh man. If that's the future of the night sky, if there's going to be thousands of those things up there, 
for the sake of internet oh man I feel sick I literally feel sick okay so my reaction might have been a little bit over the top there but maybe it wasn't allow me to explain now for those of you who don't know Starlink is basically SpaceX's way of providing global internet they're going to launch this huge constellation of satellites that are basically surrounding the entire globe and you basically have broadband internet beamed to everywhere on the entire planet it's their way of basically making a little bit of money and they're going to use that money to fund their missions to mars which is pretty cool so far they've launched 120 satellites in two different launches and the plan is to launch 60 satellites basically every two weeks throughout 2020 and if that happens spacex will have over a thousand satellites in orbit and just to give you a bit of context there are currently 5,000 satellites in total in orbit so if all goes to plan at the end of 2020 out of 6,000 satellites in space one over a thousand of those will belong to SpaceX not only that but there are other companies competing you've also got companies like OneWeb that wants to have 700 satellites in orbit by the end of 2021 Jeff Bezos from Amazon has also shown an interest in launching his own internet satellite constellation and Elon Musk has permission to launch about 12,000 satellites already and they've also applied for an extra 30,000 uh, so if that goes ahead SpaceX will have permission to launch 40,000 satellites which is insane so there's a bit of a, a competition between these companies which is really driving a race to just launch satellites and get set up and be the first one to provide the service and there's really not much regulation against satellites and, and things that you put in space now there's a huge worry because there's already about 500,000 pieces of space debris there's half a million pieces of junk that are currently being monitored by people on earth that's just up there in orbit so if there's any sort of constellation here it's that the the starlink satellites have a lifespan of about one to five years a mission time of about one to five years uh, and after that they can use the ion engines to deorbit to bring the satellite back down and it will burn up in earth's atmosphere and apparently none of the parts will actually land on earth they should all combust within earth's atmosphere if the satellite completely malfunctions then you can't make it deorbit and it has to come down naturally if they are in they are sort of low orbit then it'll probably take anything from one to five years to drop and fall into Earth's atmosphere. Of course, the other issue with having so much stuff up in space is that there are going to be potential for collisions, and this has already happened. We saw in the news a couple of weeks ago that the European Space Agency sent a message to SpaceX saying, look, we think uh, we're on a collision course, our satellite and your satellite are on a potential collision course, and SpaceX acknowledged that the risk was pretty low. Um, but then as the risk actually started increasing the probability started increasing and it was reported that SpaceX basically refused to move their satellite out of the way um, because they stopped communicating with ESA so eventually ESA moved their satellite out of the way even though they've been in orbit far longer than the Starlink satellites and then a spokesperson for SpaceX basically said that there was a bug in the system and they stopped receiving communications from the ESA. So, um, but it's an interesting point because there's, there's nobody regulating this thing. Like, how do you decide who moves out the way? I mean, you'd think it would be the newcomers would have to move out of the way. Um, so there's a lot of interesting talking points. And another thing that's not governed by anyone is the brightness of satellites there's no laws against bright satellites and when spacex launched the first batch of satellites astronomers and, and spacex themselves were really surprised just how bright these things were and uh, eventually they put the satellites into a higher orbit and because of that they dim and they fade and now they're nowhere near as visible as they were just after the launch but they are still visible particularly in the twilight skies you're not going to see them from a sort of light polluted area but in a dark sky area you can still see the satellites in higher orbit and that's exactly what you just saw me doing it was literally just before twilight i could see the satellites going over 
And you know, if I was doing a time lapse or if I was doing some astrophotography, they would kind of ruin the images. And there was an image recently from Cerro Tololo Observatory in Chile, which went sort of viral in the astronomy and astrophotography community because they showed how the, the Starlink satellites basically ruined um, over five minutes of their observations, which, you know, time is extremely precious in these observations. Now, SpaceX have basically said in the next launch of 60 satellites, which is scheduled for about another week from the time that I'm making this video, uh, one of the 60 satellites is going to have a sort of painted coating, a black coating on the underside of the satellite, which will hopefully stop it from reflecting the sunlight back towards Earth. Um, but this is just a test. Whether they go ahead with the solution or not, uh, depends on whether the coating affects the thermal performance of the satellite. If the coating works and they stop reflecting the sunlight, it would be great for, you know, ast astrophotographers like myself with the wide-angle astrophotography because hopefully they won't really turn up in the images. So there's a lot of interesting talking points going ahead and I, you know, the, the general reaction from the astronomy and astrophotography community has been you know, a lot of anger and a lot of worry, which is great. I think everyone needs to be very vocal about this issue. And there's a quote from Jonathan McDowell, who is from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and he kind of sums it up perfectly for me. He said, there's a point at which it makes ground-based astronomy impossible to do. I'm not saying Starlink is that point, but if you just don't worry about it and go another 10 years with a more and more of these mega constellations, eventually you're going to come to a point where you can't do astronomy anymore. And so let's talk about it now. And this kind of just sums up the whole situation for me perfectly. We need to be very vocal about it. We need to, uh, you know, continue being worried and angry. There just needs to be good communication between the science community and these commercial companies. And we've just got to hope that these commercial companies have a sense of empathy and they, you know, look to maintain our window to the universe and, and look after the night sky. But perhaps the one thing that's bothering me the most about this entire situation um, is that there's a lot of anger and people being vocal about this issue with the satellites when there's already a way bigger issue that's been taking over our night sky for the past hundred years and that is light pollution and we have lost so much of the night sky to light pollution it's continuing to get worse it's increasing the blue rich leds that are replacing the old street lights are incredibly impactful and detrimental to the night sky but also to wildlife and to human health and i'm not going to go into it in depth because it could be a whole other video and in fact i did a a recent talk for tedx and that should be online very soon uh, basically about the negative impacts of light pollution so i'll put a link in the video description below once that finally comes out i think it's coming out in the next few days but yeah, I just kind of wish people were this vocal, this angry and this upset with light pollution as they are with the satellite issue. Um, obviously, I'm quite, um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that people are very angry and upset about this satellite issue. But I think, you know, I just wish people would show the same sort of passion towards light pollution because it's just such a huge issue that is largely going unchecked and it's just not receiving the attention that it deserves especially when you see how the rest of the world is sort of slowly waking up and being more aware of all of the other forms of pollution so let me know your thoughts guys get in the comments box below how much do these startling satellites bother you or do you just you don't care you find them quite cool to look at global internet is amazing i don't know get in the comments below i'm really interested to see what you guys think about this because i've seen a lot of um polarization let's say both sides of the story online so i'll be interested to see what you guys think anyway make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and you should check out some of my other astrophotography vlogs and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies